I'm telling you the gospel truth. Just around the world, there will be what we call the world transfer. From it will be like a shift. It will be like a shift. A, a crop of whether young people, whatsoever. It, it's not like what cryptocurrency did, or whatsoever. It's going to be a weird thing. But one of the things I found out is that a lot of this wealth transfer will also happen to a lot of people who want to systematically bring about the kingdom of God on earth. God is so particular 2023 about his kingdom. I'm telling the gospel truth. God is so particular about establishing his kingdom on earth. Um, and that also shows you that Satan is out to fight. In some of the notes I made, um, <clears throat> nations like Iraq, this core Muslim or Islamic state, let me use that word, there is going to be a strange revival that has been happening for the past three or four years, but it's going to be like an explosion. You know, sometimes you will hear things like underground churches are all over the place, but then it is going to be open. Some of these nations will start turning secular because of, let me, the, why, why I use secular is when something, when a nation is called Islam, uh, Islamic, when the gospel comes there, it turns from an Islamic state to a secular nation before any other thing. So, there's, a, there's going to be a strange revival. But the problem we're going to have is that some of these nations who think they hold Christ, but they do not, they will face massive crisis. They will face massive crisis. And now when it comes to the church, there is going to be a strange wind that will come around the church. And what will happen is that this wind will expose the quality of material used in the body of Christ. I was talking to my leaders three days ago. I told them that this year, and this is what I'm going to tell everybody, this year, one of the things you must do is get yourself into deep-rooted Christianity. You know, for a lot of years, 100 years, 80 years, 70 years, 20 years, 5 years, 10 years, we've been talking about the remnant, the army, the army, the army, right? We've been hearing about them, right? Now, this year, like never before, we're going to get a glimpse of this army. The Lord will, the Lord is finally ready to release some of these men to show up. And we are, where, are going to, where are going to be seeing a lot of these people? We even be in some of these states I'm talking about. But what will happen is, if you are not deeply rooted in deep spirituality, you will go to it. Especially in the church. So whether you're a singer, you're whatsoever, get yourself spiritual. Because you will see a lot of spiritual men this year. And for you to keep up, you have to be very spiritual. If not, they will push you aside. So don't think that the lukewarm Christianity that you that characterized your life last year will be the same lukewarm Christianity. If you try it, your own is gone. You see all this uh, sweet Christianity. You no go work this year. I'm telling you the gospel truth. And then. <clears throat> If the church will go back to, the church strategically left the teachings of the Bible on marriage. Listen, the church strategically left the teachings of the Bible on marriage. And they started teaching politically correct things in the name of relationship coaches. And there is a strong war against the institution of marriage. But the Lord can use the church as a standard to the world. But that's if only the church will go back to the teachings of the Bible. The teachings of the Bible is not political correctness. Intending couples, the couples that just started or whatsoever, my biggest advice to you is maintain the Bible as the basis of your marriage. 
If not, you see this year, you will be tempted to go into separation. I am warning you this first Sunday of January. A lot of things will come into the mainstream media. A lot of things, in fact, sometimes, the, in fact, let me tell you, some people, what will bring that strain will be your children and the ideology they already have on marriage. Some of them will start advising their mothers. Some of them will start advising their fathers. Maintain the Bible. Satan is out to destroy the society, but he will start with the families. Maintain the Bible. Women maintain the Bible. Men maintain the Bible. I'm telling you the gospel truth. What you heard last year about divorce is a little thing compared to what you heard in 2023. If you want to destroy the society with hoodlums, just raise children with single parents or raise children with absentee fathers and mothers. Because there will be nobody to guide and direct them. The, the world and the system of the world is going full rogue. Some of your children will wake up one day and tell you that they've become gay overnight. Now, stand on the scripture, but pray that the enemy does not come into your family. Because some people will advise you that you should embrace it like that. Know that the enemy has come into your family. Stand as a watchman over your family. What I'm telling you, don't say tell you. In my note, I said that the LGTB community will gain political power. With that, they will use it to do what I call political persecution. Let us be very and extremely careful. If we can't keep the family, we probably cannot keep the church. Are you listening to me this morning? Are you listening to me this morning? Yes, sir. Now, the easiest thing and the best answer for all these things, I'm talking about these are, the, these are spiritual attacks. The best thing for this is for you to get deep-rooted into God and hold your Bible as close as anything. Let the scriptures be your companion. See, sometimes along this year, your mind will tell you something else. Force yourself to believe what the Word of God says. Your neighbor will tell you otherwise. The, the society will tell you otherwise. Force yourself to believe what the Bible has said. And know that the Bible is the highest authority of truth. To some of you, it will come like a veil to close your eyes. A rebuke that. If that thing happens to your husband or your wife, the next thing you should do, get on your knees. Satan is not laughing this year. If you're a minister of the gospel, brace yourself for political persecution and obviously a heightened, let me use that word, a heightened social media persecution. Brace yourself all for that. But also brace your, yourself up for scrutiny. I, my advice to ministers this year, get as accountable as anything. Get as accountable as anything. Don't be careless. If you are careless December 31st, 2022, from this moment, don't allow carelessness enter you. Are you listening to these instructions I'm giving to you? A season has just begun. A new season has just begun. You know, you 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 will be you'll be foolish to think that nothing has happened.
Okay, just give me Ephesians chapter. I want to I'll talk maybe 15 minutes. Don't call me prophet now. Still call me Pastor Sam. But be very careful about what I just said. As the days go by before the end of January, some of these things will become clearer. To some of you young men who are planning to get married, you see, no matter the situation of the earth, marriage must still work. But that's if you hold the authority of the scripture. I wonder why the enemy is fighting the institution of marriage so much. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 15. This is the word of the Lord for you this year. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. I will read till 20. <clears throat> Redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want you to write down three things you want the Lord to do for you this year. Write it down. Before I'm done, I will declare over it. Write down three things. I did not say four nor five. Three things that you want to the Lord to do for you this year, you want to accomplish this year, write down three things, and then I'm going to declare over it as the servant of the Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, I think verse 6, it says, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. You have till I'm done for you to complete the three things. So these are the instructions of the Lord. Number one, be careful. Be careful how you live your life. 2023 is so important that you cannot waste it. You cannot waste this year. This year is not the year where you are going to cruise life. You know what I mean by cruise? Put life, start cruising. By the end of last year, there was this common slang everywhere now. They play, just they play. Don't live 2023 without life. No, they play, no, they play. Be careful. How you live your life, be careful. Things are no longer the way they seem to be. No. The days we are living in are evil days. The laws, the advancements are no longer as innocent as we used to have it. Social media engagement and certain other things, be careful. These days, even when you turn on Cartoon Network, Cartoon Network that children used to enjoy, 
is no long, some of it is no longer, uh, what's it called? It's no longer safe for children. You turn on the telly, you are not safe. You go to this place, you are not safe. You go to this other side, you are not safe. The instruction for the year is number one. Be careful how you live your life. Don't waste your life with wine. Don't waste your life with the appetite of the flesh. Don't waste your destiny on things that will make you miserable. It's a new year. Maybe you wasted last year. It's too early to start thinking about things that will waste your life. Some of you said you did not have money last year. But if you check it, you wasted them on frivolous adventures. Some of you, the reason why you don't have a house of your own is because you've been sleeping from hotel to hotel. The reason why you don't have a car is because you've been driving Uber up and down. Moving from one place to another, using things that you should not use, paying for things you should not pay for. Be careful. Don't get yourself involved in things your spirit is not comfortable with or the spirit of God is not comfortable with. If you say you're a child of God in 2023, be careful. Because the enemy is out more than ever before to attack the sons of Jacob. What unbelievers get away with a lot of times this year, you will not get away with it. Be careful. You are God's elect. So live your life like a Nazareth. A life of consecration. As ministers of the gospel, if you are in this place, music minister, pulpit minister, whatsoever kind of minister, be careful with your personal life. Be careful with your personal life. I told you, a wind is about to be blown. It's already oh God. Be careful. If there are things you need to court, court them now. So that it doesn't put you in trouble this year. People will enter trouble a lot. Be careful the way you live your life. It was Moses who said, teach us this day to number our days and to apply our hearts unto wisdom. That's Psalm chapter 19 verse 12. You must be careful the way you live your life. Apart from death, there are other stumbling blocks around this year that you must be careful of. If your car is very low, you must be careful the way you drive. The scripture says that the days are evil. The days are evil is almost like that the days are dark. You don't come at night and you are driving 200. Is that not true? You will kill yourself. True or false? The world is getting darker every day. Please be careful when driving. In this journey of life, please be careful. Don't be frivolous. Don't just say anything. Don't just... You see, you want to get married. Be careful who you will marry. You want to build a house. You want to do this. You want to do that. Please be extremely careful. You want to make investment. Please be careful. Your money might miss this year if you're not careful. You call it investment. A lot of schemes will come up. Please, my people, be what? Be what? Don't forget this timely reminder for the year.
One of the reasons why you should be careful is that you can never take back what you have said and what you have done. So before you say it, before you do it, be careful. When you say something, you can't take it back again. When you do something, you cannot what? It's only computer that when you do something and you press control Z, you undo. Is that not true? You can't do it in life. You can't do it in life. Another reason why you must be careful is that you will give account of this year. In case you are not up to date with your 2022 account, you can start today by being accountable this year. It's a new beginning, a new chapter for you to be accountable to God, to your spiritual authority. It's a new year. You can start today. Number two, you must be productive and fruitful. Verse 16 of that scripture says, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Opportunities will come by. Make the most of it. Be productive. Don't be idle. It is only a foolish man that will think that what will make 2023 successful is by the level of amen he shouts in charge. Until you engage yourself into productive activities, you can never get the harvest of 2023. The louder your amen, the greater your blessing in 2023, that will not the work. As you say amen, as you pray, as you kabash, speak in tongues, do everything, engage yourself in productive activities. Do business. Go to work. Win souls for the kingdom. No matter how you pray, no matter how much you pray and say amen, you cannot win a soul until you go out for evangelism. Two of us, you cannot. Fruitfulness can only happen when you go to work. Be it physical, be it spiritual, you must Make, take advantage of every opportunity. Let me tell you the truth. This year, try as much as possible to be quick to spot opportunities when they arrive and be quick immediately. Some of you missed out on certain opportunities last year. When you see it this year and the Lord lays it in your heart, do it quickly. Get the profit in it. Don't dwell on revelations. Don't dwell on leadings. Don't dwell on visions too long. If the Lord says, open this, and you know that this is the voice of the Lord, open it before somebody else opens it. Do that business before your neighbor. It comes to the mind of your neighbor. If you sit on it, it will go to somebody else. Are you listening to me? Take advantage of every what? Opportunity. If it's winning so for the kingdom, you have an opportunity to win so to preach to somebody. Please, preach. You don't know whether that person will see another person that can preach to him before he dies. Take advantage of every opportunity. Very important. Number three, be wise. Someone say, be wise. Don't walk like a fool. Being foolish is, being, is different from being stupid. People can be smart, but foolish. You know, someone would think he's smart, but at the end of the day, all his madness turns to what? Foolishness. Let me give you an example. You want to go, you see one lady, the way she's spending. I say, hey, 
this lady's parents, they have money. Let me go marry her. She said, I love you. The moment I set my eyes on you, my heart fell inside. Do, 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 do. And you say, I do. And pastor now says, you may kiss the bride. And then inside your mind, you say, aha. Think you're smart. The way you get home, you will find out that you ordered for honey and they gave you alamo bitters. <laughs> you were smart, but you are what? Foolish. One man said, I wonder when it's time for the offering. He said, excuse me. I want to go and ease myself. Anytime it's time for offering, he'll go to ease himself in the bathroom. And then, one day he was sleeping. And God took him to heaven. And showed him one uncompleted building. And there was smelling urine everywhere. <laughs> he said, what is it? He said, this is what we used to build your house. <laughs> Anytime it's offering time in church, you come and urinate, Abby. <laughs> this is your house. Enjoy it now. I'm sure this thing is not real, but he was joking. Anyways. But listen carefully. Don't be smart and foolish this year. Be wise. You cannot be smarter than God. Don't use your number six for God this year. When you obey God's word, you are wise. When you obey the instructions of God this year, you are what? Wise. The instructions of God will only lead to wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Fear him. Live a holy life. You'll be wise. Only, see, let me tell you, wise men live holy. Let me tell you, holiness will save you a lot of things. Righteousness will save you a lot of things. You see the way we are now. If we start, if we do open HIV tests now, some people will run away. But I will sit there and give you my hand. Why will I give you my hand? I'm not afraid of anything. If you know chop, or you know go there your mouth. If you know, you know what I mean. Be wise this year. Don't be faster than your shadow. Follow the leading and the timing of Jesus. Some people were very unwise last year. They went faster than their shadow. And they regretted it. Some people, I remember sometimes last year, I will, I will advise some people, they will think pastor does not know what he's doing. That same last year, you will still see the same wise person, his, his wisdom, his craftiness, and in tears and premium tears because they think they are wise. He said, Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, what? Acknowledge him. What will he do? He will direct your path. See to it. And you are wise this year. You must understand the will of God. For you to understand the will of God, you must study the word of God. You can't understand the will of God without studying the word of God. The easiest way for you to be a wise man is to get into the word. Anybody that knows the word of God and does the word of God, he's already a wise man. You cannot be wiser than the word of God. No, this is the hub of wisdom. This is the, word of, the hub of wisdom. It was this word, you know, David said, that what have I hid in my hand that I might not sin against thee. It was this word that now made him wiser than his teachers because he has Taking this word, this word became food to him. It was tasted to his lips. And all of a sudden, he became wiser than his teachers. Get the word of God inside of you. 
be guided by this world. You have decisions to take. Take in the perspective of the world. You will come out better. I have a lot of things to say, but because of time, service is not the finish. They will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be thankful. And praise God. These three things. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. This year, don't walk in darkness when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. You see, a lot of people say, I don't have money, I don't have money, I don't have money. Go and read Psalm chapter 23. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. So he's talking about the leading of the Spirit. Don't be, now watch this. He said, Someone said, I don't have money. I'm hungry. I'm not eating. I'm not doing this. You have not read Psalm chapter 23. Read Psalm chapter 23. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. He's talking about the leading of the Holy Spirit. What is the next thing he said about the Lord is my shepherd? So, why are you wanting? I read that scripture again. He's not talking about just the Father. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. It's as long as the Lord leads you, he can lead something. Oh, you don't understand. He can utter something. He can utter something. Are you listening to me? It's because he will not lead you into a place of lack. He knows dry land. He knows which one is healthy for you. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in where? He leads me beside what? Hey! So, he brings you to a place of peace. He, brings, he makes you lie down in green pastures. If you follow the Holy Spirit today, if you follow the Holy Spirit this year, he will lead you into investments that are cool, without, without, without headache. Are doing business, your BP is greater than their bank account. Is that one business or sentence? That one is dead sentence, it's not business. Are you listening to me? I love the Holy Spirit. He will tell you, ask him. You see, there is nothing you ask the Holy Spirit that he does not have a solution for, even in your business. How do I know? He helped Joseph, he helped Daniel. It can help anybody make any sane business decision. Don't be in error. Some of those would I want to do you. The Holy Spirit knows that their intention. He will give you nudges if you don't if you don't listen well. He will give you nudges. Follow him so that you don't waste your money this year. So I say MMM, MMM. I remember one two times my greed would have taken me into losing money. But the Holy Spirit will always say, not now, not now. After a while, I will see it crash. I said, thank God. I've never lost any money to any scheme. I can't take my money. The Holy Spirit will tell me, should I give this guy or not? I said, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. My hand is not there. Since I came to this land, every investment I've made has been a hit. And I've had a lot of opportunities. I've not taken every investment. Not every investment. I've not taken every investment. But whichever one the Lord directs me to, I do what? It works. It's a hit. Allow the Holy Spirit lead you this year. You'll be fine. He cannot lead you in a place of lack. He cannot lead you in a place where you were peace is absent. Of what, of what benefit is riches without peace? He says, still waters. Of what benefit is glory and fame without peace? You don't understand. So, by the time you are lying down in green pastures, if there is no still water for that peace, you will wake up from that place. If you chop, you will be looking like this. And you should not be looking like that. When you eat, you relax. It will make your enemies at peace with you. <laughs> Don't worry. And then be thankful and praise God. See, if one thing you must do this year, 
Don't complain and grumble. That time you want to use and complain and grumble. Praise God and be thankful. Let me tell you, some of some people are already looking like their problems because they are complaining. This might not be looking so well. Don't show the world. Keep thanking God. One day it will what? Change. That's why some people don't even know when we're having good times or bad times. Because we are joyful always. We are what? Joyful always. They don't even know when, when we eat or when we don't eat because we are joyful always. We always look like people the Lord is helping. Because the Lord is always helping us. <laughs> are you listening to me? Yes, this year, be thankful and praise God. He said, they bring one news. He said, thank you, Jesus. You need to give him praise. Because I know that nothing happens in his, in his back. Without, no, no, I thank him. If something is taken away, we give him praise. He knows why he, that one was gone. We give him praise. <laughs> are you listening to me this morning? Now, are you ready to give God praise this morning? No, you're not sounding like you want to give God praise. Are you ready to show God gratitude? Now, it is good to start the year with thanksgiving. Everyone stand to your feet. It is good to start the year with what? With thanksgiving. You must start the year with thanksgiving. Have you written down your prayer point? You have written it down. Now, I will not declare over it what I want now is that I want you to come out, drop it on the altar. I'll tell you when to do it. You drop it at the altar and go back and dance and sing praises. We don't need that prayer now. What we need you is to sing yourself into that reality. Are you listening to me here? <laughs> Who is ready to enter into the reality of his request? No, you are not excited this morning. Who is ready to enter into the reality of his request? Where is Minister Busi? Man of God. Okay, write your own and come. Now, now start coming. Start dropping it on the altar. Start dropping it on the altar. Ratash kele de bele rosi abrahalia. These three things, if you wrote more than four, cancel one. <laughs> three things. As a prophet of the Lord, you will be alive this year and see it come to pass. I'm telling you. The words of his servant does not fall to the ground. Because these are spirit filled words. Jaratara da balekoros, Yavrani Abraha, Yekoshata. Zere tevrekus cavratale de belege de behelia. Ashkala da balebe. I want to welcome my elder brother, the minister of the gospel. All the way from the coast city state. Please, COT, can you make some noise as we welcome Minister Abel C. Lift up your hands to Jesus. Happy New Year to everyone. I expected to hear a new level, new height. Can you lift up your hands and sing this simple song with me? Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done in my life. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh Lord, 
We give you thanks. Lift up your hands and declare this song. Come on. Thanks. thanks. Let the instrument go down. We give you thanks. Let me hear your voice. You have done. Ooh. My soul. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. One smile again. We give you thanks, Lord. Say, yeah. Oh, oh, my God, I give you thanks for all you have done for me. Oh, yes, Lord. For the many things you've done. I, oh, 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 oh. I am so glad today. My soul has found rest. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. Father, we lift your name. Father, we we'll lift your name. Lift up your hands and give it. We we'll lift your name, yeah. Jehovah, we we'll lift your name. Somebody wave your hands to Jesus. Come on. If you are grateful this morning, give him thanks. Kaya. Yeah. <laughs> 